I've been working on new initiatives and entrepreneurship and education and innovation studies for a long time. One of my roles has often been to try to create new initiatives and new opportunities, oftentimes even when the community or the context isn't ready for them. And I will be honest, I do not succeed every time. There are all sorts of unexpected challenges and difficulties and you can try to mitigate, you can try different ways of getting everyone on board and seeking shared ownership, but you're dealing with human beings and there are lots of uncertainties and unpredictabilities. So what I'm gonna share with you won't take those away, but it will give you a really important mindset and perspective. What I wanna talk about is load bearing walls. Yeah, the idea of a building, and I'll talk about that in a minute. When you're in a building, there are walls that are called load bearing. The same thing is true when you're trying to affect change or pursue innovations in an organization. I've come across this analogy from several sources in the past, and I found it to be very helpful. When you're trying to remodel a house, you can move walls, you can take some walls down, you can do all sorts of things that will drastically change the house so that it can create new affordances, new benefits, new opportunities. But you do have to be careful for a few things, and one of them is you have to look for load-bearing walls. A load-bearing wall isn't always evident at first. Sometimes you have to do some investigation from underneath and look around, but you have to figure out these walls. These are important because, as the name describes, they are load-bearing. If you were just to go in and knock that wall down, the roof might literally fall down on top of you. It could be catastrophic. The same thing is true when you're trying to affect change in an organization. This is why systems thinking is so important. If you change something over here, it might have an unexpected consequence consequence over here. And that would be an example of a load-bearing wall. I work in the field of education, for example, and you might want to make some kind of technological change that you think is relatively small. But when you change it, it might change the workflow of five or six or seven other offices so much that it doubles people's work or it breaks their systems. That's a problem, and that was an example of you changing something, moving a wall, and you didn't realize that it was actually load-bearing, and all the other offices fell down and fell apart because of your change. So if you're going to affect change, go for it. It's important. Renovation of our organization and changing and adaptation are absolutely critical for us to respond to the changing opportunities around us. But you have to take the time to look for those walls. Have you? I'd love to hear your comments and questions down in the chat below. What are the load-bearing walls in your organizations? How have, in your organization, how have you identified them and how do you respond? By the way, you can change a, a load-bearing wall. You can move it, but you just have to prop it up. It takes much more care and preparation. Same thing is true in your organization. So let me know, what are your load-bearing walls? How do you respond to them? If you find this useful or interesting, hit that like button. If you want more content like this, go ahead and subscribe. And I'll be talking about this uh, concept of innovation, change management a little bit more in some upcoming videos, so stay tuned.